It's Pi Augustine, your Division 1 candidate for Ipswich. My plan is for a community that is vibrant and attracts world investment. A community that is connected with the state-of-the-art transport system. A community that cares for our people and environment at a time of need. Division 1 needs a councillor that has the energy and motivation to get things done. A community champion. Find out more about me on my Facebook page, Pi Augustine for Division 1. This ad was approved by Pi Augustine Candidate. Coming up, a breakthrough on funding to eventually upgrade Ripley Road to four lanes. An art gallery for kids. Stop the Stink Petition gets council support. And four new leases in Nicholas Street. Mayor Teresa Harding joins the show following the January meeting of Ipswich City Council. It's Monday, January 29, 2024, and I'm Alan Roebuck. Welcome to Ipswich Today, which acknowledges the traditional custodians of the land on which it is produced and pays respects to elders past, present and emerging. This podcast is supported by Kinetics, people-powered web hosting trusted by Australian businesses since 1999. Thanks for speaking with Ipswich Today, Mayor Harding. My pleasure. Thank you, Alan, and thank you to the listeners of Ipswich Today. The first council meeting of the year on January 25 and the last before caretaker period, there was more discussion on the Stop the Stink petition received by council last year and referred to January's council meeting. Firstly, why was it referred to this meeting rather than a relevant committee? Um, The relevant committee would have been the Growth, Infrastructure and Waste Committee, but we wanted to come to the ordinary council meeting for all councillors to to hear it. Um, Redbeck Plains resident Tracy Butler was invited to present the petition to council last month, and so the report came to council to resolve it, and and we've resolved to send the petition on to the local state members, but also the Minister for Environment, Science and Innovation. Uh, The Queensland Parliament does not accept change.org, uh, petitions. They obviously the the um, Queensland Parliament have uh, an e-petition site. So as part of our response, we'll be encouraging people to sign up to the current e-petition um, on the Queensland Parliament website to stop the stink of the waste industry in Ipswich. What else is Council hoping to achieve? I think just letting people know of the petition, uh, uh, just highlighting to the the minister that it's not just council talking to them and it's not just the 27,000 odour complaints, but this is something that is really, really important to our community. It's important to the health of our and wellbeing of our residents. And we really want to make sure that um, we've been pushing quite firmly for several months now, it's a council position, to compel um, any composting uh, operators to invessel um, their organic matter, because that's the, that's where the odour is. So um, we should be mo- making steps that if it's within five kilometres of residential area, it needs to be in, uh, enclosed. Another item on the agenda this month, more regulated parking coming to Springfield Central around the community centre. What is going to happen and when will it take effect? Yeah, this was money generated from, from residents and Councillor Johnny brought this forward um, in Springfield Central, just near the community centre and YMCA there. Um, there's currently no um, restrictions there. Anyone can park there. It's quite it's next to the school. So it's being used for all day parking there, which means um, some people who have mobility issues or accessibility issues or prams and kids and trying to get to baby clinics have no parking nearby and they're having to park further away. So um, we've introduced a, an interim local law. So it's in practice for six months and we'll see how that goes and we'll have it heavily signed. Uh, So there will be some parking uh, restrictions on there with timings. We'll see how that goes and we'll get feedback from the community to see how that's working. So I take it that's one step before introducing physical parking metres? Yes, it would be. Yeah, that would be the next step if it did come along. Um, We've discussed it with the state. So look, I don't like putting up more parking metres and certainly don't like fining uh, residents, but um, this is one that has been has come from the community, and so we'll, we'll test it out for six months and see how we go. I'm yet to find a councillor or a mayor who does like parking <laughs> meters and uh, finding the community. Teresa Harding. Yes, especially the, around schools. <laughs> the Enviroplan levy is always a work in progress, and it's one of the great things that's uh, been sustained through multiple councils. This council has agreed that Flinders Gorman Conservation Estate will be increased by about four percent. I think through a bit of a a stroke of good luck, uh, it's Mm. a case of an adjoining property owner approaching council, so it has Mm. to be a good thing. Yeah, we're quite quite fortunate that we've had uh, an adjoining um, neighbour approach us and we do have the money there. Um, And look, each time... Anyone pays their rates, whether it's directly as a rate pay or indirectly as a renter. Um, there is a levy there for the usage Enviro plan. And over the last 23 years, more than um, $11.9 million has been invested purchasing nearly 6,000 hectares of land. So, look, I think this is a really great um, 
step forward. It's another 93 hectares of significant conservation land at Peak Crossing. So it'll be a great way for you know, protecting our endangered flora and fauna. There was a big review of the Waste and Circular Economy uh, Directive, which is a, a fancy name for what you're going to do with rubbish. One of the recommendations uh, delegates to the Chief Executive Officer to establish a Joint Waste and Circular Economy Transformation Task Force with the Queensland Government and key stakeholders. What will this mean for residents? This has been a key part of our Waste and Circular Economy Transformation Policy Directive, um, which we had to give because our planning scheme really didn't have the mechanisms that we wanted uh, and all the policies for when council officers were making decisions and, and to go forth. So it was a very big piece of strategy that we did and it was adopted in council in December 2020. That task force, which deal, works with the Department of uh, State Development as well as the Department of Environment Science, has worked with us to, to make a lot of outcomes. We've also had several court wins. We made a decision as a council to spend, invest a fair bit of money. We spent, I think, over $11 million so far fighting uh, waste companies who wish to create new landfill or expand. So we, we stopped with, with Land Track and Clean Away, BMI, one list. We stopped the um, Ramondas incinerator being built. So quite a few wins for our community. So um, I would love to see that task force do more, um, but it is a unique one. No other council has this particular task force for those departments. An interesting idea was put forward to the January council meeting, and that is for a new children's art gallery in Ipswich. It's kind of the first I've heard of it. It may have been discussed behind the scenes. If it happens, where will it be? And what will become of the existing space in the Ipswich Art Gallery? You know, Council adopt, resolved to um, investigate putting in a children's art gallery, uh, so not no commitment to money yet, yet. But on that corner of Ellenborough Street and Brisbane Road is proving quite a challenge for the, the leasing team there. And um, so we're also looking for something that's quite inviting. We have a, a young population and the, art, uh, the li children's library has been a huge success. It's been having an attendance around 95,000 people a year. So we're floating up the concept of a children's art gallery on that corner. We think it will attract a lot of people. And uh, uh, Councillor Doyle has also done a fair bit of media recently talking about reinvigorating, you know, the, the, that dining and retail precinct along Brisbane Street in between Ellenborough and Nicholas. It's been a bit of a dead area, especially with the um, diagonal escalators that used to go into Nicholas Street precinct. It totally, totally bypassed that part of Brisbane Street. Also bypassed those people at the top of um, Nicholas Street precinct as well. So, uh, look, we're putting out there. The diagrams are there for people to look at. We've had discussions with um, some state and federal MPs just, just as a as a concept and we'll now investigate that and go to the state and federal governments to see if they'll be keen to invest in that as well. Staying with Ipswich Central, the Ipswich Central Redevelopment Committee report uh, highlighted four new leases which were endorsed uh, in the last week of January. How many tenancies in Nicholas Street Precinct in the council-owned property are now leased? It's very um, exciting. We have um, we only have another, I think, 21 tenancies remaining across the portfolio. But from a space perspective, 71% of the commercial space is now leased, which is a great step forward. And certainly since we've had um, Hoyts secured in there, um, the area is far more attractive and we're getting better financial uh, benefits for residents as well, which is fantastic. So um, loved, I can't wait till we can announce these four new leases. Uh, it's quite exciting and um, and I guess because we go to caretaker, we've now given that permission to the CEO to finalise negotiating those leases. Committee Chair Marnie Doyle made special comments at the end of her committee meeting of why they're confidential. Mm -hmm. Are there any hints of the category or <laughs> type of business? <laughs> I can't give you a wink, wink, nudge, nudge, confidential is confidential, I'm sorry, but I think people are really impressed with the brands and I think people are impressed with the services um, that will be offered. Well, how about this one? I'm intrigued by the car park <laughs> lease. Will these car parks be used for something other than parking cars? I think people will like, will like the service that will be offered there. Okay, let's join the dots on that one ourselves. <laughs> The proposed Ripley Road Infrastructure Agreement, now this sounds like a big deal. In simple terms, yes. what does the agreement cover? In simple terms, the Ripley Valley Priority Development Area is um, has been set up by the Queensland Government, so the planning instruments all go through the state government. Um, and there's, they have an obligation to provide trunk infrastructure, so the main roads and, and things like that. Um, Council, I think it was back in 2017, was, was quite frustrated with the state and actually adopted a resolution for council not to spend any more money in Ripley until 
uh, the state government coughed up funding for trunk infrastructure. So it's quite a, a big stand. This has been going on for some time and the previous council was finding this challenging as well. Um, we've worked very closely, this council, with Economic Development Queensland and, and I think advocated really successfully. So we made the decision to... Um, um, repeal that particular resolution and um, now we now the state governor are offering us catalyst funding uh, so council will have to borrow money as well but really what will happen is that Ripley Road will move to a four-lane median divided urban arterial road and Fisher Road to a two-lane urban sub arterial road so it's quite exciting I I can't tell you how much that's costing at the moment I want, but once it's signed off we can um, be very open with the residents to see what the what it is may I encourage residents to go to shape your Ripswich there's a great page on there about what's happening on Ripley Roads. It goes into the detail of the four different stages of the roads. Um, it also has an FAQ there as well. So um, if you have a question that's not answered, can you please let me know? And um, if you've got the question, other people will too, and we can put that on the um, FAQs as well. Well, without looking at that website, Mayor Harding, I do have one. Uh, is there a timeline for those improvements to Ripley Road? <laughs> It depends on um, when we get the money from the state. This is actually a big step forward. We've never had this catalyst funding before. Well, there was some seed funding in the beginning, back in sort of 2009, 2010, but nothing else since then. This is actually a really big deal, and I'm really grateful that the state government um, have done this. I know the state MPs have also pushed for it, um, and Councillor Sheila and Councillor Jacob Mads have also been working very closely to, to get this done as well. It's it's a really it's a really big thing. It's um, long overdue, but it's it's and I can't fix up the, the past, but um, in moving forward, it's a really, it is a really big deal to make a big difference to the people of Ripley. The feeling of a local government election is in the air with caretaker period starting January 29. What does this mean for councillors and their activities and council services, more importantly? For council services, it should be no different for residents. Um, the libraries are open, the, the bins are getting picked up, uh, the the fields are getting mowed. That that doesn't ha that doesn't change. The restriction is on uh councillors um, because we are campaigning. So it's making sure that we don't use council resources, ratepayers' funds, um, to support us while we campaign, which is not seen as a council activity. It's, a, it's considered a private activity but under, under the law. So um, so once caretaker kicks in, um, you'll see that um, we won't be conducting sort of those community matters mobile offices. Um, I can't issue media releases from the council. Um, council can't make decisions that are or, or procurement decisions over $2 million. Uh, we can't bring in any new policies and we can't hire and fire a CEO. So it's it's very much, uh, you'll see that we've got still a number of committee meetings and two more ordinary council meetings and we'll be still be doing, you know, making decisions on things that we can't uh, make, we can't encumber a future council on, on things. I mm -hmm. will chat with you in a future episode about your campaign, but in the meantime, Teresa Harding, thanks for speaking with Ipswich today. Thank you very much, Alan. I look forward to chatting with you. Um, uh, being the mayor is a very uh, full-on job and I've been very focused on delivering for, for the people of Ipswich and during the election period I'll certainly have a, a bit more to say on, on what I'd like to see going into the future. We'll talk to you then. Thank you. That's it for this episode. Just a reminder to look for handy links in the show notes. Ipswich Today is supported by Kinetics people-powered web hosting trusted by Australian businesses since 1999. This podcast is listener supported. Please make a once-only gift or regular donation to help keep it online. Just go to ipswichtoday.com.au. Follow and stream this podcast from your favourite app, including iHeartRadio, or play Ipswich Today on smart speakers. Music is supplied by Purple Planet Music. This is Alan Roebuck. Thank you for listening. Enjoying Ipswich today? Please share the love on your socials.